On today's Saints Happy Hour podcast, we are going to tell you what to root for for the picks in front of the Saints and what players you need to get excited about when other teams take them. Thomas, hit that intro. Welcome to the award-winning Saints Happy Hour podcast. Seriously, this podcast has won awards. American standards are dropping every day. The show features Ralph, the best host in the world who can barely pronounce his own name, much less anyone else's. Marcus Colson, Colston, I mean, uh, Marcus Calloway. Dave is that dude who loves taking bathroom breaks. He's mad about almost anything, so make sure to lower your volume when he speaks. Put that freaking clown meme back up that I made. Jesus Christ. Andrew has sources, watches tapes, and knows football. He rarely shows up on time and wants to commit crimes to help the Saints win. Sean Payton would have done illegal things. Don't tell me I'm wrong, because you know it's true. Oh, and there's also Kevin, who is great at doing mock drafts, but struggles to actually watch Saints games or have a functioning relationship. Budrich wants to know how uh, the doctor's doing. That that ended. Anyway, grab a drink, sit back, and enjoy the insanity. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour Podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you find us on the YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like this, share this. Uh, and if you're listening to the audio only version and you're not a patron, become a patron. Go to saintshappyhour.com. We can't do this without you guys. Thanks to all the patrons who support the show, but we love a couple of new people. Join our community. It's the best Saints community going. Uh, all right. I got Kevin with me. I got Thomas running the show back in Poland. And on today's show, here's what I wanted to do, Kevin, because because during the draft, two of my most favorite things, one of them was well, two, two things. that One of them is my favorite thing, and the other one I don't like, but yo, you guys think is hilarious. My favorite thing, well, I'll start with the thing that you guys think is hilarious. When we're doing the text chain, and we're talking about the picks and all this. And I have to go do something. My wife says, go water the flowers. Go give Max a bath. And then while I'm away from my phone for that 15 minutes, Mickey Loomis trades up. And I'm nowhere to be found. And I don't know what's going on. Um, that's, y'all's, that's y'all's favorite thing on the text chain. I do not like it, but, but y'all really love it. The other thing that is my favorite thing when we're texting each other on the dra- on, on the on the uh, on our phones and and in the discord with saints happy hour my other favorite thing is rooting for what we want the teams ahead of the saints to do right yeah. we're like ah take this we need we don't give a we don't give a damn about those players take whatever you want we need we need this kind of player and for the entirety of the sean payton era basically it was just like draft quarterbacks offense we don't care just leave those defensive players till the Saints get there, and we're good. And we, you know, me and me and uh, Andrew was breathing out of a paper bag as Lattimore was falling in twenty in twenty seventeen. So it was obvious, like the Saints need defense, and like that's what we need for like fifteen years of Sean Payton era. But this year, I think it's different. I think it's a little bit more complicated. I think it's more than just. Oh, let's just hope the offensive tackles fall. That'll be fine. I think it's a little more complicated than that. And I wanted to have you on. We, we talk about the draft most Fridays. But I think your experience and your knowledge doing all these mock drafts and the PFF stuff after the combine has changed, after the free after free agency, the, the algorithms have changed. And you're doing these mock drafts on the PFF simulator. What are you seeing in those first 12 picks? We'll start with, some a little bit of negativity. What are you seeing in those first twelve picks that you don't necessarily like, and you're like, "Oh no, that's that's Wait, that not good like, for the Saints." That I don't like. Um, or you might think. like it because. Well, I tell you what, side, I, it could I, be I, more likely I, to trade down. No, no, no. I've got something that I don't like. That oh. I don't like. I'm sure some of you and uh, you know some of the sycophants <laughs> that are actually in our Discord <laughs> will vehemently disagree with me on, which I'm fine. It's like whatever. You want to disagree with me? Line forms around the block. Um, Brock Bowers. Oh, here we go. I've seen Brock Bowers yeah. falling. I, I dropping like dropping slipping to fourteen. Mm-hmm. in some mock drafts, it, 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 not just in mine, but in like others, you know, like I've looked in other places and I've seen Brock Bowers go as late as 18 or 19. Yeah. Um, and that's because other things are happening up top that, that as Saints fans, we should root for uh, because we want certain players to 
to fall down oh. to us. Uh, honestly, I would be fine. Me, uh, me, I would be fine with Brock Bowers being available at 14 because I'm going to stare at my phone and wait for somebody to call me. Yeah. Or I might start calling other people up well, and being like, well, hey. Here, I have a question for you. We know the Saints need offensive tackle. Correct. But is there just a tiny bit? And you know it too. You listen, the ramp checks yeah. re- might retire, and offensive tackle is a disaster, right? But is there just a little tiny part of you, Kevin, that is like, you know what? If all those offensive tackles are gone at 14 right. and Brock Bowers is there, maybe. I that mean, will force Mickey Loomis's hand to really consider a trade down. And well, you're kind or of they might just it. take Brock Bowers because he would be the best player available. That's right. Which again, it's like, would I? I'm not going to come out here and hate on it. Yeah. But I would just be like, man, I kind of wish the board would have fell a different way because, like, their 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 top mm-hmm. need is offensive tackle. And I would say a close second. I, I I don't think it's one A one B anymore because of like they did sign the guy from Frisco. Uh, I can't think of his name right, right now. They did sign him, but they do still Chase need Young. to draft an edge tackle. Right. He's a one year. He's a rental. Defender. He's a rental, right? Right. It, right. That's a good way to describe it. He is a rental, so they are going to need a, an edge defender, and I would consider drafting one. Uh, you are going to see edge defenders available at fourteen as well. Well, I think like. You know, Verse is like the prototypical DA, ginormous Hodor size defensive end for your Game of Thrones people. He's like the 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 perfect Saints defensive end. Previously, they like them big. They like them to hold the edge, and they say they're they're considering drafting them smaller. We'll see. Here's my question, though: As you do these mock drafts, yeah, we're ta- there. I, I hear the chatter on the quarterbacks. Are you starting to see? Not just three quarterbacks going in the top 12, let's say, of the mock. Not just four. But are you seeing Sean Payton grasping at Bo Nix? Are you seeing five quarterbacks going? Or is that just sort of not the, – the simulator isn't bearing that out? Um, I've seen Bo – like I literally on one of my <laughs> – I don't even want to count all these tabs open on my – uh, computer here, but on just this one window, I should say. I, I have another window, but that's, you know, for that's Willie's time. Um, <laughs> yeah, on one of these tabs, actually, Bo Nix is being picked by the Broncos at yeah. 12. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty wild to see Bo Nix going at 12. Like, I mean, I, it's what? I, I, it, like, the fact that Five quarterbacks are going at 12. Like, honestly, I, I, if, if the commanders or the, pa- or the Patriots don't trade out of those spots, mm-hmm. quarterbacks are going one, two, three. That's right. Uh, if I could see if the Vikings don't trade up, I don't think the Cardinals aren't going to draft a quarterback. The Chargers won't. Mm-hmm. Tennessee won't. The Falcons won't. The Bears won't take them at nine because they already got their guy at one. And it's probably and it is 95 percent certain that it's Caleb Williams. I'm probably underselling that. The Jets won't take a quarterback because they they got, you know, conspiracy theorist, uh, you know, flat earth or whatever the hell. I'll I'll just make up conspiracy theories that he believes in. Um, The Cardinals, maybe, but. I could see yeah. them still rolling well, with, that's, uh, with 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 Call of Duty guy and just and just picking I up. I think they are. I think wide receiver. Ky- Kyler Murray was good was good when he came back last year. I think so, I think that the Cardinals are committed to him. So that leaves the Vikings at eleven, which means I've I could definitely see them them getting JJ McCarthy. Yeah. So that's four quarterback. Which the Saints, as a Saints fan, you should want. You four want it. Yes, quarter, that's all right. The four quarterbacks to go before 14. I mean, in an insane world, yes, somebody would, you know, the Broncos or the Raiders would panic and grab Bo Nix. 
I've only seen Bo Nix go. But here's the th- a very small number of times. It, here, here's here's the thing with Denver that I I knew it, but I didn't. I I, I I knew it, but I didn't really understand it until I started listening to – I was listening to uh, Robert Mays and Nate Tice, their podcast, and they were going through the team. They, they go count back 32 to, to 1, and they go through all the team needs. And until they said it out loud, I didn't realize it. Denver, we should know this because we – the Saints have their second-round pick. Denver doesn't have a second-round pick. Doesn't have a third round pick. Like they, have, they don't. They're like the Saints, man. They have a giant hole where they don't have picks. So like, Denver might be in this weird area of like, oh my God, we love Bo Nix, and yeah. we don't have yeah. a pick in the second. We can't. We can't wait for the second round pick and then try to trade up. And we don't like right. any of these, you know. And the thing is with teams. Freak out about quarterback in a way they don't about other positions. Right. We're a team, well, we're well, a right. team because quarterback is the biggest. Quarterback is the biggest. Uh, the oh, I wish I could think of a good like the, a good series of words here for this. The draft is the apex or mm-hmm. or, or the crux of selling your fan base. On hope, yeah, that's the commodity. You, that's the commodity yeah. more than anything. Well, Fan bases across any sport want to have hope. Well, that's it. And the, the thing about the quarterback is, and 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 the quarterback fans, is the biggest difference maker, yeah. and the and, thing that can inspire the most hope and, in a fan and, base. And fans feel it, but coaches also feel it. And I'll give you an example: when the Saints drafted. Marcus Davenport, or that's not a good example because they think of Lamar Miller, but I'm going to say when they drafted Stephon Anthony, right? Terrible pick, a bust, a horrible pick. We don't go back and look at it and say, oh, they should have drafted that offensive lineman instead. They should have drafted this corner and said, no, no, no. But in 2017, the greatest draft in the history of the league, maybe, and the greatest draft unquestionably in Saints history, people still lament. Oh, man. They almost got Mahomes. They were ready to tra- they were ready to pick Mahomes at 10 and Kansas City leaped them. And we didn't get we didn't get a generational quarterback. And Sean Payton talks about it to everybody on earth. I was gonna I was gonna draft Mahomes. We were ready to do it. I told Drew that he had his two buddies there. I told him I pulled him into I pulled them into the closet and we were gonna draft Mahomes. I told him that it was gonna happen. So here's my thing. Sean Payton, if he looks at Bo Nix as his guy. Knowing what we know about Sean Payton, Kevin, there is no freaking way that he's going to pick another player and trust his general manager to trade back in or trade back because he's going to be like, I want Bo Nix. Bo Nix is the guy that I believe is going to fix our quarterback position. Draft his ass right if, now. It Listen, if, he, if they're that sold on Bo Nix, or, or mm-hmm. listen, if somehow – if the Vikings decide to pass on a quarterback, which would be absolutely asinine, but whatever, it's the NFL, teams can be mm-hmm. stupid, um, then, it, then, then the Broncos would grab J.J. McCarthy. Um, yeah. so. Well, just to, but here's the thing, though. I, I, don't, I, I, think, I think it comes down to are the Vikings and Denver – do they love either or both of those guys, right? Like, like the, the, the Bo Nix, it may, be, it may be made up. Like, people, people speculate that Sean Payton likes him. It may be a lie. I don't know. The thing is, you, you, have, to, you have to wonder, do these teams really like this quarterback? My thing is, I think quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, four. I, I just can't see Arizona or even – or five in San Diego – if you know, and if you're Arizona, and you know you're getting calls from Minnesota, and you're negotiating with them, right, right, right. and you and you're and you're trying to do, oh, I want to, I want both first, and I want to pick next year. I want blah 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 blah. You, it, it, Arizona, you're kind of stuck in a sense of you 100 percent know if you tell Minnesota we're not doing the deal, and you pick Marvin Harrison, you know. That San Diego, Minnesota's just going to call them and offer them the same deal, right? So right. I think I think Arizona 
is going to be the quarterback spot because they're they're they've traded down a bunch already. They're they're right. They general have, managers. They have seven picks in, in the, the top, top. one hundred four. Yeah. So I seven. Just, this is I, this is literally my wet dream. It is. I was for an say, NFL like, draft. So I can't see I can't see Arizona not doing a deal for a quarterback because they argued over a 2025 third round pick that they wanted that Minnesota wouldn't give them or something like I can't, right. I can't see Arizona not trading out. So uh, Joe, one, two, three, four, but Arizona. You can- so they only have six picks in 2025. I could see them dropping back and saying, okay, we'll take a later pick, a much later pick, but we need something from 2025. Yeah. Like, we want your 2025. Yeah. Answer. We want, we want your, we want your, we want your third and your fourth or something like we want, we want all your mid round picks from yeah. um, 2025. I could, that's a, that's a great point. The other thing on this draft are, and we don't talk about it a lot and we don't talk about it for the Saints because corner isn't a huge need for the Saints. We've talked about offensive tackle. We talk about defensive line and all those sorts of things. I mean, it will be, it will be. There's a couple of corners. Maybe three, depending on the, uh, Cooper DeJean or DeJean. We argued about that on the podcast, how to say his name. He's, he's kind of all over the place with his rankings. But is, is corner, have you started to see the corners start to sneak into the top 13? Oh, yeah. In, in, um, hang on. Let me – shoot, I just had it pulled up. Um, so Cooper DeJean and mm-hmm. Kenyon Mitchell – are the top two corners, mm-hmm. right? and then and then you got Terry and Arnold, who is PFF has him rated at fifteen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Walt, you know, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, Terry and Arnold. Yeah. So I'm I'm switching over between a couple of different mock draft uh, mm-hmm. settings here, or or uh, sites, I should say. And those three guys are going in the top fifteen. And even the top 20. I, th- I don't think the Saints need to grab a corner with the first, you know, assuming they stay at 14. I'm assuming they stay at 14. But, but here's the thing. Would, as I look at the top, if I look at the top 13, I think Atlanta and Denver and the, Ra- and the Raiders could all go corner depending. Like Denver, I think... They they're just as likely to pick Bo Nix to me as they are to pick a corner. And Kevin, See, the, it, here, okay, I tell you, what, make your point, and then I'll disagree with you. I just see the the the, the sen- like that to me is the dream scenario. If you if I can't have five quarterbacks go in the top thirteen, give me four quarterbacks, the three top receivers, that's seven, and two corners, that's nine, and. Alt, that's 10. Now I'm looking that and then suddenly you're looking exactly how you want it to go for the Saints. I just I it, it would it would surprise me, but it wouldn't totally shock me if Atlanta went corner at eight, is all I'm saying. A- Atlanta and Raiders both went corner. Could be a very good, very good, good, good situation for the Saints, but mm-hmm. disagree with me. Yeah, so I see. So wait, who's ranked? Who's ninth? Who's ninth here? Because that would well no, that's supposed to be the Bears. So the wrong thing there. I apologize. And and you and we also after you look this up, I want you to think about like every draft almost. There's there's something that we're like, oh my God, they just traded up for Mitch Trubisky. What what are we doing? Like right. so, so there's always but, some so team what doing I'm, something stupid. So the four quarterbacks before the mm. Saints, you'll and then also one, two, three, four. You get four the four wide receivers, the two LSU kids. You think and, you think Brian Thomas could go top thirteen? Wow, possible. Wow, yeah, uh, not not out of the realm of possibility. That's right. His because yes, because his his tape and his Raz 
Like, he's irresistible. Oh, oh shit. I mean, that's a dream scenario, too. You get four so, quarterbacks, so, four receivers, so that, two corners. That's then, 10. Then Cooper DeGene and Kenyon Mitchell. So that mm-hmm. puts you at 10. That's right. You get Joe Alt. That's, that's 11. 11. 11. Yep. Who's the, who's the top? Uh, let me get, look at the top edge guy here. And, May, and so Turner. You've possibly Turner. got... You've possibly got no, not him, not him, not him. Move down, move down. You got uh, Jerzon Newton from Illinois. Yeah, uh, that's an interior guy. Yeah. And then with Edge, where'd he go? You got Dallas Turner. Yeah. Latu. Shit, somebody could reach and take. Uh, and I say reach, as in like slight reach. Somebody could grab Byron Murphy. The yeah. interior guy. And then with OT, so I said Joe Alt. And then you got Fwaga mm-hmm. from, where is he? Oregon State. So it's entirely possible that Fwaga could be available at 14. Uh, Fashano. Uh, Fountaineau. And I'm mispronouncing that. Yeah. The, the, the tackle yeah. from uh, That's Washington. That's three tackles. Right. So you could have three tackles available. Possible that Dallas Turner could be there at edge. Possible. Jared Verse, I think, for sure will be there at edge. J.C. Latham, tackle. Nate Wiggins at corner, he'll be there. Like Here, here's here's a question for you, Kevin. Yeah. Oh, I remember. So here's the thing I was going to say before with Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers, yeah, it's possible Brock Bowers could be there at 14. Mm -hmm. But... I think if Brock Bowers slips, I see Denver going after him. Ooh. Listen, Sean Payton a- may not have a quarterback, but, but uh, you get Brock Bowers at, at tight end. Yeah. You go grab, I, I, I don't know if Tannehill is still available, but you grab somebody like Orion Tannehill in free agency, mm-hmm. and you just have a, a, a thing where it's like, Mm-hmm. I'm trying to build the team up with the, with the the few draft picks I have. Yeah, and I'll worry about quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like, because obviously, listen, the owners and the management let him mm-hmm. drive off Russell Wilson. So clearly, they're not going to dump him after 2024. Yeah. So that means they're investing in him for beyond that. So he looks at 2024 like, let me start getting pieces in place. Hmm. And get some, and if Brock Bowers falls, or if one of those, if one of the top wide receivers falls to him, yeah. I can see him grabbing that. Yeah, and Here, saying to hell with quarterback, I'll, I'll sign a free agent, I'll draft one later, uh, you know, in the later rounds, uh, you know, whatever. Here, here's my question. Listen, I, and I know people will scream at us. The Saints never trade down. They're never going to trade down. It's never going to happen. Well, I want it so, to happen. So there. I want it to happen. But, but so here's my question. Let's say it all goes swimmingly for the Saints. And they're there at 14. And they've got three of those tackles. Whoever they are, not all. Whoever, whoever the top. Let's say it's the three of them, right? And let's just say... The Saints, they won't grade them all the same, but let's say the Saints are comfortable with all three of them. And they're like, we got them similar, they're similar grades, they're in the cloud. So we got three tackles that we right. are very comfortable with at 14. And you're Mickey Loomis, and you got calls, and teams are saying, hey, we want to move up, we want to move up. How far... If you're Mickey Loomis and, you, and, you, and you're not Kevin, you're Mickey Loomis and you hate to trade down, but you got three tackles. If you're Mickey Loomis, how many spots would you be willing to trade down and believe you can still get one of those three tackles oh. and get a pick? How, how far would you be willing to go? You're not Kevin, but you're Mickey Loomis. Yeah. How far do you think? Yeah, me, I would trade down to 32. In yeah, the first round and just and just and stockpile, stockpile, stockpile. Man. But Mickey Loomis and doing that, uh, hang on, let me pull back up. So let's is it possible that Fuaga could also and I'm I'm who knows if I'm mispronouncing his name. Mm-hmm. Uh is it possible he drops down too? 
I'll say for this exercise, he does not. So him and Alt are already gone. So that would mm-hmm. leave Fountno, Fashano, Latham. Mm-hmm. You got Mims. Graham Barton's listed as a tackle. Yeah, but, but those. Are, I, I, but think, I've been I think that. I think I've been those guard center. I think those are the, like the second tier guys. So, so I think you got three guys there. Okay, so so Fountno, Fashano, and Latham. Mm-hmm. And you want to say how far back could you go? I think the furthest back I would consider trading would be 17 or 18. So that's the Jaguars or the Bengals. Yeah. Um, and honestly, Mickey Loomis, it might even be more conservative. He'd probably take the more conservative route and say the Jaguars. Yeah. Because um, I, like I think Colts apparent, the Colts don't seem to need a tackle. Seattle doesn't, but they need interior guys. Could they look at one of those guys as, hey, we'll play him on an interior. If one of these two rookie yeah. tackles that we drafted two years ago doesn't yeah. work out, we could bump right. them out. And then um, the Jaguars, same thing. They need a guard and a center. So that's why maybe trading to the Bengals would not be the best option. So, Well, the, well, the thing is, the lowest, I would, if you're looking to grab one of those three guys that we mentioned, then yeah. the Jaguars might be your safer of the bets. Well, here's the thing, too. If you just trading from 14 to 17, I could probably get you to like Mickey Loomis could play hard, but I bet you you could get a top 100 pick for, you know, like you if the Saints. 96. You can get 96 from like, the Jaguars. To me. And 116. You can even get your own pick back. Yeah, like, I, I, like to me, that's perfect for the Saints because then you, you're either getting, you're getting, you now have three in the top 100 or, 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 or three yeah. in the top. Yeah, you have three uh, in the top 100. Yeah, and then plus, I just, and then plus I got 116 from them, so now I've got four in the top. Yeah. Of, so I got three in the top hundred, and then a fourth win at 116. Yeah. So yeah, I, I so, thought I was going to have something. Clever so back to our original thing that we started this podcast on: what to root for if you're a Saints fan? You want you? I want quarterbacks. You want all, you want four, if not five, quarterbacks. I think five is unrealistic, but you want four quarterbacks to go before you want you, you want Marvin. You want you know you want Harrison to go. You want neighbors to go. You want somebody to reach for one of the edges, whether, whether that's Dallas Turner or or whoever. You want them to go. You want uh, Rome Odunzi to go. Yeah, he's going to go too. I think. That's I, you receivers. know, if you want to root for Bryant, for somebody to like go ham for Brian Thomas and grab him, sure. But that's mm-hmm. uh, that's unrealistic. Two of the corners, at least. Yeah. And then uh, you know, one of the other tackles. So that would be Fuaga. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get out of here. What's fun? I, what's I, funny I, is what's funny is all of this. We're doing all this talk. And I'm seeing more and more mock drafts or projections where it ends up just being Olu Fashano at 14. Yeah. Which, I, hey, happy as, I'll be happy I, as a clam I, with that. I just look at him, Kevin, I just look at him as major school. Raz is very, very good. Played a ton of games. Like, he just feels like a very... Saintsy pick and a pick where when they pick him afterwards, they're gonna be like, he was top six on our board. And it won't and, and and you know, teams are like, we couldn't believe he was there. But I really believe it's a thing where he's a guy could be I, I, he could be very, very high on the Saints draft board. And I wish we don't have our sources, our sources on as good. Um, where we know, like I just I feel like he could just be a guy where the Saints would be like, we're, we're not trading shit. You know, but yeah. but my fi- my final question, and then we're gonna get out of here for you. Sure. Set me up the scenario that not because we we we've always said it. We don't think the Saints will trade up, but but set me up the scenario where if the Saints are at fourteen and they don't trade down. It would drive you absolutely bananas, and you'd be like, "If they're not trading down, this like this is the perfect scenario for you to trade down, Mickey Loomis." And you're not okay. Uh, like it's never, it's the never happening thing, as long as you're running the Saints. The only okay, so so you mean what would be the scenario that would drive me insane? Yes. 
I mean, look, if Brock Bowers dropped to 14 and, and we found, but this would be an after the fact. If we found out there were a few teams calling them mm -hmm. and Mickey Loomis just was like, no, not interested, I would be annoyed. I think the thing that would make me like, that would drive me nuts. And, <laughs> and I joked about it on the big show. That's right. I said, if Jaden Daniels falls to 14, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my phone out of my house. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm opening a window and just chucking it because Saints Twitter is going to eat itself because they're not going to take, I'm saying they're not going to take a quarterback at 14, but then if he's, if the, if one of those quarterbacks falls to 14, Like, that's that would have to be the best player on the board. Yeah. And so then it just becomes this this thing of, well, if they take him, I look at that as as almost a waste. Because they're not getting rid of Carr. Like, they're just that's not. Right. They put they yeah. put too much money in him to just get rid of him. And you're going to have it's it would be a huge distraction mm -hmm. with whoever the quarterback would be. Uh, backing him up from the first, you know, I wonder first overall pick from your team in the first round. It would be too much of a distraction. I especially mean, I, when I, the team has so many other needs. I wonder. I wonder for Jaden Daniels to fall to fourteen. I wonder what kind of felony would he have to commit where Saints Twitter would still be? We would be understanding that the Saints aren't taking him. Like if he if he like if they're like hey Jaden Daniels he murdered a hobo we are, he's we, it's it's alleged would Saints Twitter be like it's possible murder you can't take him at fourteen I don't think they would I think they'd be like take him like there's I don't think there's any crime any any scenario where Saints Twitter would be okay with the Saints not taking him at fourteen but that's not going to happen um, uh, just to find another. Uh, you know, this exercise, and now I promise this is the last thing, Kevin. As you've done this mock draft, as you've done them, are you feeling pretty good about where the Saints sit at 14? Because I know, you know, we've been doing this mock draft where you become our mock draft expert. We've been doing this for a couple of years. And I know some years you're like, eh, I don't know. Like, I don't, feel, I don't feel great about where they sit. How are you feeling about where you're like, okay, they're going to sit at 14. How are you feeling about everything that's going to go before them? Are you feeling pretty good? Like, hey, no, I, I think... I feel confident that, that a good tackle is going to be available at 14. Again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm keyed in on the fact... I, I'm just keyed in on offensive tackle is their biggest need. Yeah. There are enough good tackles that, that one would be available at 14. I think the, there's a slight... Mm-hmm. If say, if say at fourteen it's shoot, I just lost. Uh, if it's J.C. Latham and Amarius Mims mm -hmm. that are that are the ones that are available at fourteen, and you've got the edge tack, you've got the edge defender. I keep calling him edge tackle, damn fool. Like if yeah. Latu is there and Turner is there and mm -hmm. the other fella from uh, Florida State's there. Then it kind of becomes a, or, or even, and if one of the top mm -hmm. corners is there, the, uh, why can't I think of his name? Kenyon Mitchell yeah. and Cooper DeGene. Hey. Like one of those guys is suddenly there. So okay. now you've got one of the top corners and like yep. two or three of the top edge guys are yep. sitting there with like the lowest guy in the, yep. in the top tier of tackles. Then it becomes a, a tug at the collar situation. Yeah. It's do you take, the lower tackle, yeah. or yep. or do you take one of the other positions that that are gonna that are yeah. position of need to a lo to a slightly yep. lower degree? Yep. Or do you start fielding calls? That's the okay. only yeah. thing. But honestly, yep. I don't see that happening. Yep. I don't see that happening. I think the four quarterbacks are going. Yep. And and other situations are gonna go like that. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Like us, rate us, review us, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to saintshappyhour.com, become a patron. We need all the support we can get. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Thomas for running the show back in Poland. Until next time, the bar is closed.